Life is not a destination. It's a journey. And the same thing is true with building software. A lot of people build software by designing it and then just simply writing the code to fulfill the design. But when we do this, we're cutting off a lot of opportunities to learn because the process of building software actually teaches us how to build it more correctly. As my friend Woody Zool says, it's in the doing of the work that we discover the work to be done. So let's discuss. Hello world, I'm David Scott Bernstein. Building software has been something that I've been doing for decades. And I've done waterfall development and agile development and many other kinds of ways of doing software development. And what I've discovered is that I learn a tremendous amount in the process of building software. And so I don't build software in the traditional way where I make a plan and then I execute that plan and then I validate that plan. Instead, I do those steps all together, all the time, constantly. So I'm constantly changing my mind, changing the plan. And that sounds inefficient, but it turns out when I pay attention to the forces of what I'm building to be highly efficient and highly effective. We want to discover the best way to build things in the moment as we're building it, because that's when we'll have all of our data. That's when we'll be most familiar with what we're actually doing. It's like if I was going to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast, I could look at maps and plan things out based upon the weather and, you know, all sorts of other conditions. But being there and driving and, you know, adjusting the wheel as I'm going is going to be critical. I can't plan it all out, right? I can't know what the traffic is going to be like, or et cetera. And that's why being in the moment is so critically important to being able to respond correctly and well. And if we agree about that in life and in other tasks, then we could also agree about that in software. That you studying the forces, understanding what's going on, and giving ourselves the ability to get feedback from that is absolutely important. It's an important aspect of de developing software. And it allows us to build more accurately. Because honestly, when we're thinking about something complex like software, the behavior of software, it's very difficult for humans to hold all that in our head. We think we can visualize those things, but we really can't. And, you know, software developers, programmers, we uh, are experts in this. We do this all the time. And we're 10 times better than most people at doing this, at visualizing. And yet we still have a really hard time visualizing all the details of a complex system before it's built. It's just so complex, right? Humans' brains didn't, can't handle that. And so that's why we build incrementally. What we're trying to do is make life easy for ourselves. And we do this all the time, right? If you see a giant boulder that has to be moved or whatever, people don't just like go, oh, this is a hundred ton boulder. Let me see if I can lift it up and fail over and over again, right? That would be futile. That would be silly. People do not do that. What we do is we say, okay, how do we, how do we make this so that we can deal with it? Maybe if it's a giant, huge boulder and we can't move it, we figure out how to break it up into smaller pieces so that we can move it. So, you know, we don't just sit in front of intractable problems and go, oh, I can't do anything about it. What we do is, as human beings, is we try to figure out how to, how to address things. Same thing is true in the virtual world. The virtual world is not that much different in many ways than the physical world. And it is completely different in many ways than the physical world. And so understanding that really is quite critically important so that we can use our skills from the physical world, our understanding in the virtual world, so that, so that we can start to get some sense of this virtual world. So how do we do this? How do we work in the virtual world? How do we step forward and start building something when we don't even know what we're building, when we're not quite sure how to approach it? And this is a really important question to ask. When we start to ask these questions, we start to get answers and we start to see new pathways for creating things. And it turns out there's many opportunities to create things in the virtual world and many ways to create things in the virtual world. 